So many people have speculated on who the Antichrist will be. And while I have my opinion on a very small handful of people, I'm not going to speculate because in the end for me, it's not going to matter. Jesus will have already come for his church. And here's my argument for this. 2 Thessalonians 2, 6 through 7 reads, And you know what is restraining him now that he, the Antichrist, may be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. So who's the restrainer? Well, it's a very commonly accepted, it's very commonly accepted that the restrainer is the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit will be removed along with the church. And this is when one man comes on the scene to save the world. The state of the world will be an economic crisis or some kind of calamity, and everyone will be crying for someone, anyone, to save them. And consider this. If we already see such lawlessness now, what do you think will happen when the Holy Spirit is removed? Mark 7, 2 says, For from within... Out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders. It is going to be a world I want no one to be a part of, but it's coming. Some of you might question why I would talk about Israel. The answer is simple in that everything within the Bible and Revelation boils down to Jerusalem. And there are a few key things happening here that I need to point out. First and foremost, just the fact that Israel is a nation to begin with is purely an act of God. Empires have come and gone, and for all intents and purposes, there should not be a Jewish nation. God scattered the Jews around the world. They have been the most persecuted people for all of history. Most cultures, they, they get grafted and assimilate into the land in which they live. But the prophecy of Ezekiel 37 spoke of a time when the nation of Israel would be born again. And in May of 1948, Israel lived for the first time again in centuries. There was no Israeli nation before then. This was a critical piece of history for revelation to come to pass. And so let's fast forward to what's going on currently in Israel. We are currently seeing a global increase of anti-Semitism. In turn, this is drawing Jews to emigrate to Israel. This has been increasing over the last decade, but this also fulfills God's promise in Isaiah 43, where God said he would gather Israel again from the far reaches of the earth. Not only is Israel gathered. Look, Israel is a landmass about the size of New Jersey, and yet it has become the eighth most powerful nation in the world. It's not bad in my book. One of the key things that Jesus spoke about that would happen right before the second coming is how the Antichrist will stand in the Jewish temple and proclaim that he is God and demand to be worshiped. This happens in the middle of the seven year great tribulation. But that's a problem as currently, there is no third temple. There, there, there are a lot of politics and religious beliefs that are holding this up. However, Israel is actually ready to build now. Now, if you Google the Temple Institute, you will quickly see just how ready they are. Look, they've made the utensils. The furniture is built. A year ago, they started practicing sacrifices. They've been breeding red heifers to bless the temple. They're running commercials on TV to promote the rebuilding of the temple right now. And just last month, I heard a pastor talk about his trip to Israel, where he had a chance to talk with someone who worked at the Temple Institute. Apparently, they have already cut the stone for the temple and are just storing it. When he asked about how long it would take for the temple to be built, this person said, oh, three and a half years. This should mean something to you because that is the midway point of the seven-year tribulation, and that is coming soon. The point is, they are ready. Israel, Israel is ready. 
Jesus said in Luke 21, 29 through 32, behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you will see and know of your own selves that summer is near or now near at hand. So likewise, when you see these things come to pass, know that you, that the kingdom of God is nearly at hand. Truly, I say to you, this generation shall not pass away until all be fulfilled. It's a very common belief that the formation of Israel was the fig tree blossoming. So this begs the question, if 1948 was the blossoming of the fig tree, how long is a generation? So I'm going to share a thought here that it's pure speculation. However, it is grounded in scripture. The book of Psalms is clear how long a generation is. And I think it's Psalms 109. It says that the days of our lives are 70 years, and if by reason of strength, they are 80 years. Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Some versions read 70 years, 80 if by might. So let's say it's 80 years for the second coming of Jesus, which is not the rapture of the church. 1948 plus 80 years later makes 2028. Now we know the 70th week of Daniel, which is also known as the seven year tribulation, has to happen right before Jesus's return. So let's take 2028 and subtract seven years. That puts us at 2021. Daniel 9.27 says, the ruler or antichrist will make a treaty with the people for a period of one set of seven years. But after half of this time, he will put an end to the sacrifices and offerings. And as a climax to all this terrible, his terrible deeds, he will set up a sacrilegious object that causes desecration until the fate decreed for this defiler is finally poured on him. So understand, it is this treaty or covenant, as some passages say, that begin the final seven years, not the rapture of the church. And personally speaking, I believe if the rapture of the church happened today, it would actually take some time for this to get organized, but not that much time. But it could be months to perhaps a, a year or two. When you see things this way, hopefully you understand we need to have a sense of urgency. Could this seven-year tribulation start in 2021? Possibly. But that would also mean Jesus could come for his church just about any day now. Matthew 24, 36 says, But about that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. I agree. We should never set a date, especially considering everyone that ever has has failed miserably. And I'm not going to do that. But I do believe we are supposed to be aware of the season or time frame for Jesus's return. So where does all of this put us today with this coronavirus calamity? Now, that's a great question. In a sea of misinformation, how can we filter all of this to determine what is really going on? The answer is I cannot be 100% certain, but I'm going to run with the premise that, well, if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. So let's start with the 5G network. I've seen and heard reports that this 5G started the virus. Now, I do remember back in the 90s when several people reported getting brain tumors from holding their, the first mobile phones to their head. And then they said when they, want to, or when they went to digital, it was not an issue. It seems to have slipped under the radar now. But I don't believe holding electronic equipment to your body for extended periods of time is actually good for you. It's my belief. I don't have proof, but I do recall when I was 18 being on top of a mountain and near a microwave relay station getting sharp headache, and we, we got off the mountain quickly. Look, 5G did not start this. However, I find it very interesting that there has been a mad dash to put more towers up during this lockdown. In fact, one was erected right across from my church. But how I see 5G playing into Revelation is how everyone during the tribulation will be tracked. The government will always know your whereabouts. Can they do it now? Yeah, absolutely. But because 5G is faster and more powerful, the enforcement agencies will be more precise with how people will be located. 
So a simple answer, so you would think a simple answer to combat this would be to leave your home, your phone home, right? And that brings me to my next point. Bill Gates and ID 2020. 